Hello everyone, this is Mr. Waz and welcome to Wazley Science. We are going to begin the year with density. This should mostly be a review for you guys, but if I am going too fast, please feel free to press pause, slow down, take notes, do whatever you need to do. Alright, let's get started. I'm going to start today with a story. There's a man named Archimedes and he had a bit of a problem to solve. The king of Syracuse had a crown made by his jeweler. It was a one pound crown made of gold, and he wasn't sure if the jeweler ripped him off, meaning that the jeweler could have mixed in some silver, still had the crown equal one pound, kept some of the gold for himself, and not really let the king know of this. So the king went to Archimedes to see if he could solve this problem, to see if in fact there was silver mixed in with the crown. So if you may have heard this story before, but what do you think he did to figure it out? And your hint is that he did use density to his advantage. So maybe now you're wondering, what's density? Very simple. Density refers to how much stuff there is in any given volume. It's a simple ratio. And all you do to figure out density is you take the mass of the object and you divide it by the volume of the object. And on the bottom right side here, we have the triangle method for calculating any sort of density or mass or volume if you were given the other two. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of that right now. So let's say you have a block, or better yet, a cube. And the cube is on each side three centimeters. So how do you figure out the volume of a cube? Very simple, you just multiply all three sides, length, width, height. So three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. So the volume of your block is 27 centimeters cubed. So now we need to take the mass of this block. Let's say you put the block on a triple beam balance and it comes out to be 50 grams. At this point all we have to do is look at our triangle and we are trying to figure out density and we have figured out mass and volume. So by looking at the triangle you can see that the M is above the V. So what do you do when something is above the other? Mathematically you divide it. So 50 is our mass, 50 grams. 50 grams divided by 27 centimeters cubed comes out to a density of 1.85 grams over centimeters cubed. Make sure that you guys always get your units correctly because that is something that you could lose points on, of course. And so that's that's how you figure out density. Very simple. What makes the triangle so useful is that if you are given a problem in which you are asked to calculate the volume, but you are only provided with the mass and the density, then you can see by the order of the triangle, MDV, that you would divide the mass over the density to get the volume. And that also works if you were asked to figure out the mass and you were only given the density and the volume. So in that situation you just multiply density times volume and then you would get your mass. So there's this triangle really is useful for people that struggle with math and algebra. So you know then there's an easy way to remember it. You can just always remember MDV, mom drives Volkswagens, you know something like that is very helpful for you. All right. Density is very important. It tells us how tightly things are packed together. And if something and if something's very packed tight together on a molecular basis, it's considered to be dense. So obviously the block on the left here is less dense than the block on the right. And this is really, really important with earth science. This is why we talk about this at the beginning of the year because its density comes up in many of these units. Things that are more dense sink and they push up 
the things that are less dense. And you're gonna see that in multiple examples throughout the year. So just to give you one earth science concept that's density related is warm air rises, cold air sinks. You guys know that, that's a very basic sort of concept. But that has to do with density because the cold air is packed tighter together so it sinks. Warm air spreads apart more. And this has to do with basic laws of thermodynamics, which we are actually going to uh, go and get to in the next unit. So let's think about lead and popcorn right now. If I have a liter of lead and a liter of popcorn, they would have the same volume. So they would take up the same amount of space on the table in front of you. However, one would obviously weigh have much more mass than the other and that's lead. Lead would weigh, the liter of lead would probably be very difficult to pick up whereas a liter of popcorn you could easily pick up and throw around the room. Now if I have like a pound of lead and a pound of popcorn, a pound of lead would fit in my hand very easily but a pound of popcorn would be like half of garbage bag full. So that just gives you a perspective of density. Obviously here, lead is packed tighter together than popcorn. Lead is more dense than popcorn. So at this point, the concept should make a lot of sense to you. So population density, it's something that you actually talk about in 10th grade, but you can understand the concept now which area has a greater popular density? South Dakota or Tokyo? Well, Tokyo, there's more people packed in per square mile. There's less people in South Dakota. South Dakota is less dense than Tokyo. Here's three things that we'll talk about this year that are driven by differences in density, wind, ocean currents, and plate tectonics. We're not gonna get into them right now but these three things are driven by a difference in density something is less dense than the other thing which causes the one that is less dense to float on top of the thing that is more dense so let's have a quick check here salt water contains more than just water right it contains you know salt and other minerals that are dissolved in it and as a result salt water is heavier than fresh water so think about this right now. Would you, as a human being, have the ability to flow easier in fresh water or salt water? It, just thinking about that, even if you've never been in salt water before, your mass and volume wouldn't really change when you go from one or another. So you're the constant in this situation. And the difference is the salt water and fresh water since the salt water is more dense, it will push you up more than it would in fresh water. So you have an easier time floated in salt water than fresh water. That's why in this picture here, that's of um, a very salty lake and you can float very easily in it. So while we're on this topic, let's have a little talk on weight and mass. You know, in science, we, of, we often like to use the word mass instead of weight, and maybe you're wondering why. Weight has to do with the gravity pulling on the mass, and your weight is in proportion to whatever planet you're on. So we always use the word weight because, well, we're always on planet Earth, so it doesn't really matter. But... In science, we prefer to use the word mass because your mass doesn't change no matter where you go, and neither does the volume. But your weight depends on the size of the object that's pulling on you. So I really like this concept. I think it's really interesting. So if you're on Earth and you weigh 160 pounds and you go to the moon, you would actually feel less heavy. You would feel around one six of your weight on earth so you would end up feeling about 26 pounds so if you ever want to know how much you would weigh on the moon how much weight you would feel take your weight and divide it by six and that's how you can figure out how much you would weigh on the moon and this is because the moon is one six the size 
of the Earth. So now think about what if you went to some other planet, like let's call it Planet X, and the planet was twice the mass of Earth. Well, that would mean that you would feel twice as heavy, and that would not be a good day. This demo will be done in class, but let's just talk about it to help you review. Let's say I have a slice of bread, and it's one centimeter by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So as to figure out the volume, we just do one times 10 times 10, and that comes out to 100 centimeters cubed. And this slice of bread weighs 24 grams. So using the formula that we talked about before, what's this, what is the density of this slice of bread? And you just do 24 divided by 100, and you get 0.24 uh, grams per centimeters cubed. So that's the density of the slice of bread. Now one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the density of water. Take a wild guess of what the density of water is. I'll give you a clue. It's extremely convenient for you to remember. And that answer is one. One gram per centimeters cubed. Meaning that if something is less than the number one, it will in fact float. If something has a density more than one gram per centimeters cubed, it will sink. So what's this slice of bread gonna do when you put it in the water? It's gonna float because it's a smaller number, it's a smaller density than the water. Now what if I take that slice of bread and I squish it into a very tight ball, a two by two by two centimeter ball? and or square cube to make it kind of easier here so we don't have to do any you know um, diameter and use pi and whatever so let's say it's two by two by two and it comes out to eight centimeters cubed and the slice of bread still weighs 24 grams it's not like its mass can change right you just made the volume smaller so going back to our formula mass over volume what's what's the new density density of this slice of bread and it comes out to um, when you divide 24 over 8 you get 3 grams per centimeters cubed so now the density of this slice of, of this bread is more than 1 gram per centimeter cubed so what's that squished ball of bread gonna do it's going to sink to the bottom and that's just that's a very interesting concept there because you have this this thing that was once able to float in water now sink in water which should show you that density can really change depending on how packed it is together let's build off that concept shall we look at that aircraft carrier it probably weighs a lot not gonna lie it's probably pretty heavy so how the heck does it float in water? Very easy. They use density to their advantage. So when we realize that the density of water is around one, what that means mathematically is all you have to do is make sure that the number that you have for your volume is a bigger number, a larger number than the number you have for your mass. You need to make sure that your volume is larger than your mass because when you divide the two over as long as the mass is smaller than the volume when you divide these two and you need to make sure your units are correct and I'm sure they're not using mass in, in centimeters cubed when they're trying to figure this out for the aircraft carrier but as long as the mass is a smaller number then it will equate to some sort of density that is less than one and if it's less than one that means it'll float guaranteed so if they made that aircraft carrier more compact and they had more things in there to pack together the aircraft carrier would sink to the bottom of the ocean that's why when a boat crashes and begins to fill up with water it sinks because its mass eventually surpasses its volume. We call this concept of comparing an object to the density of water specific gravity. It's basically just a ratio, the mass over the volume. And if something is less dense than water, it will float. If it's more dense than water, it will sink. 
if something's the same density, it will flow with the water. Our density is very close to one, so we can actually change our buoyancy by the amount of air that we have inside our lungs. If you are in a pool or in water of some sort and you just constantly breathe out and respirate, you will start to sink. And when you fill your lungs with lots of air, it's actually easier to float. So let's go back to our buddy Archimedes. He was having a really tough time trying to figure this out. So he decided to take a bath. And when he went into the water, he saw the amount of water rise as his body went into the bath. And when he saw this, he realized that he could put the gold crown into a bucket of water, see how much the water level goes up, and then he could put a pound of gold into a bucket of water, see how much that water goes up, compare the water displacements, and see if the volumes of these two things are in fact the same. This concept later became known as water displacement, and it's a technique that's used to measure the volume of an irregular object. And the way that the story goes is that he was so pumped up and excited about this discovery that he jumped out of his bathtub and ran around the streets naked yelling, Eureka! Eureka! I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the way the story goes. Anyway, density. Gold is twice as dense as silver. So if there is silver mixed in with this crown, then the volume of the crown will be more than the volume of a regular old pound of gold. So the way that it goes is that Archimedes saved the day in that the crown in fact did have silver mixed in and the jeweler was in fact trying to rip him off. So yep, he's a hero and then for that the jeweler end up weighing less. So why care about density? Density describes how something weighs compared to the same amount of something else. It's very important in earth science because things that are more dense will sink and push up the things that are less dense. You're going to see this concept time after time throughout the year. You're going to see it when we talk about warmer air rising above colder air and this creates our weather. You're going to see that when we talk about a rock known as basalt which is denser than granite and granite is made up of one type of plate tectonics which sink under the type of plate tectonics that are made of granite and while they are sinking and moving this creates tsunamis and volcanoes cold water is denser than warm water so the cold air cold water will sink below the warm water and this creates our global ocean currents and helium is even less dense than air and this makes really happy kids Credits to content and organization of some of this presentation goes to John Schwartz. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please remember to subscribe. If you'd like to hear more things on density, I have two videos on the bottom here where you can see the layers of density, and you can also see when you mix hot water or cold water or salt water with fresh water, what kinds of things happen, and they color the water. Um, if you'd like to read an article on how lighthouse keepers used to keep their lighthouses going when there wasn't electricity, click on that link right there. Um, it's quite interesting, and they're using density to their advantage. I'll tell you that much. Thanks again, guys. Take care.